Ask and you shall receive. You may have seen my other video that I did on the Inmodus Fuse Drive. It's a piece of hardware. It's kind of crowdfunding. It's kind of a pre-order. It's more pre-order than crowdfund. But this is an SSD. It's an M.2 SSD that has a little bit of SLC, a little bit of dedicated single level cell flash, and also QLC. So the main drive that I talked about was the 1.6 terabyte SSD from Inmodus, the Fuse Drive. And it's designed for Windows, but you know, I got a lot of questions about Linux. So this video is about getting that SSD to work with the SLC on Linux the way that you would expect. Fast and snappy and responsive and all sorts of goodness. So let's take a look. So the five minute version of this video is if you want to use this on Linux, you can use it with LVM cache. The trick is, well, how do you know where the SLC is and where the QLC is? Well, it's in the forum thread on the level one forums. All you got to do is create two partitions on this SSD. I've given you the LBA block numbers. Be sure to recheck that forum thread because those LBA block numbers may change in the final retail device. This isn't really supported or sanctioned by Inmodus, but if you use those LBA block numbers, you can create two partitions, one that has your SLC flash cells and the other one that has your QLC flash cells. You can combine that with LVM crypt, Bcache, LVM TS, LVM tiered storage. If that's still a thing anymore, I was using that like five years ago and it was, it was pretty decent, but, uh, you know, whatever your, whatever your preference, whatever your poison is, if you just want to use the 128 gig SLC, uh, as a separate ZFS intent log, uh, you totally can. That's, that's totally up to you. You can use it any which way you want in any configuration you want because the magic of Linux, but all you really need to know is those LBA block numbers. But you know, for a longer explanation, I shall continue. All my testing was done in our ASRock Aqua system. If you didn't see the system, you should definitely check out the build video for it. <laughs> this is the fastest 10 900K. It is just, it's just nuts, 5.3 gigahertz. It's got built in, a built in cold plate, built in liquid cooling. The system is just insane. But that single thread performance really gives me, you know, just a few more kilobytes per second when I'm doing all this IO benchmarking, whether that's Windows or Linux, it's basically plug and play. So this is really, I mean, this system is just, crazy for gaming and single thread fast single thread performance i recently did a video with alan malventano who is now with intel but used to be with pc perspective but you know when he was with pc perspective he did a lot of uh really amazing write-ups and documentation and sort of forwarded the community's understanding of what exactly is going on with ssds and solid state storage because SSDs are sort of complicated. <laughs> and the, you know, the way that he described it in, uh, uh, in the video is that he was using you know, a shotgun basically to, uh, you know, a, an electron shotgun to set the levels. And it's like, is it zero or one? Or is it zero, zero, one? Or is it zero, 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 one? Or one, zero, one, one? Or setting the levels of flash. Flash drives are fantastically complicated. Like that's really, that's really the best way that I could explain it. So there's different kinds of flash memory, single level cells, multi-level cells, triple level cells, quad level cells. Pretty soon we're going to have five level cells, penta level cells. And the more levels that a cell does, the more quickly it wears out, but also the slower it is to write and the erase cycles take forever, depending on if it's SLC or QLC, it's going to be forever pretty much across the board. So what Imodus is doing with the their drive is they have a fixed 128 gigabyte region um, on their drive that is single level cell. And then the rest of the drive, the other 1.5 terabytes, is uh, you know just standard issue QLC. But if your software is really good and you pay attention to how you're writing to the different flash cells and you have something that is being rewritten over and over and over again, you use software to make sure that a particular cell does not wear out. You sort of spread those writes around so that all the writes happen evenly, so you're not really you know, sort of wearing a hole in the carpet in just one place by, <laughs> by walking around. Now, the problem is that the driver on Windows that sort of does this magic, it sort of moves things in and out of that 128 gigabyte tier, uh, doesn't exist on Linux. There's not really a Linux analog for that. And to be sure, this is actually tiered storage. So it's one and a half terabytes plus 128 gigabytes. And you have the full capacity of both of those things available. Well, on Linux with LVM cache or B cache, 
it doesn't really work the same way because it's more like a cache than a tier. Although if you look in the Linux documentation, you will see that it refers to things as tiers and sometimes cache tiers and you can have tiers of caching, but tiers of caching is not the same thing as tiers of storage. And uh, it's not the same thing as, you know, your tiers when you're going to be working at the command prompt trying to set this darn thing up. The good news is that it is actually quite mature to have tiered caching storage on Linux these days, even in LVM or even if you just want to do bcache for block caching. There is actually a lot of really interesting differences that I discovered between LVM cache and bcache. And uh, it used to be like five or six years ago, I was doing tiered storage. There was LVM TS, but there was something you could download from GitHub and it would totally give you tiered storage because at that, like five years ago, I was combining SSDs, like sort of the slow, like first gen, like kind of not the most stable thing in the world, uh, SATA SSDs with NVMe. And that worked really well, but that required patches from GitHub and a little bit of sketchiness. And that might be something to revisit in a future video. LVM cache is basically out of the box in every distro now. And under the hood, LVM cache uses uh, DM cache in the kernel to n handle the caching. And so what you can do is because it's a fixed region on this drive, when you do LSPCI in Linux, this drive will show up as just your standard issue NVMe. But in the forum thread, I've got the LBA block numbers. So you can create a partition, well, two partitions actually, on the Inmodus Fuse drive and have one partition that is your SLC and another partition that's your QLC. And then you can use LVM to say, hey, our cache device, our cache data blocks, and our cache metadata are on the SLC and our data storage is gonna be on the QLC. And I've got step-by-step -step commands in the how-to on the level one form so that you can set that up and basically be running just as good as you are on Windows, maybe even better because you're not using a proprietary driver, you're using something built into Windows. The only downside is that you lose that 128 gigabytes of space because it's not truly a tiering solution. Now, you might wanna use uh, Bcache. Bcache is another option. Bcache is, is block caching. In some ways it doesn't have the overhead of LVM and so in some ways it's better. Although in practice, messing around with this, for me, I found the best performance was, was LVM and uh, sort of tweaking LVM to use DM write cache. And so DM write cache is sort of something that's come about because most of this tiering stuff, most of the caching tiering stuff on Linux has come about mixing from mixing SSDs and hard drives. So hard drives are glacial compared to SSDs. And the speed difference between QLC and SLC uh, is a lot, but it's still, both of those are still light years ahead of a mechanical hard drive, especially in terms of reads, especially in terms of access. So DM write cache is just a write cache and writing is definitely much faster with SLC. But these algorithms are also sort of more complicated than they really let on because if you have like a streaming thing going on, which means it's like, you know, I'm copying memory cards, I've got my 150 gig or my, you know, whatever, this recording that just ends up being just massive amounts of gigabytes. If I copy that, you know, with a not very smart implementation of a caching algorithm, that ends up blowing away everything in the cache because, you know, I touched 100 gigabytes of, of movie file or whatever. But these implementations on Linux and in Modus's implementation on Windows are smarter than that. They know when you're doing a huge sequential read, so they won't bother to cache that. So the kinds of operations that you would want to speed up for me is mainly working with things like Git repositories, lots of little tiny files, scanning the file system, that kind of thing. And so DM write cache uh, basically just will allow you to do reads in kind of an uncached way, but the writes are cached to the SLC. And then later as a background task, the SLC will be flushed out. And so you don't necessarily notice it as much. Um, it's a, seems to be a pretty good strategy. Uh, anecdotally, just using the Linux system for productivity tasks and using the Windows system for productivity tasks. It does seem like Inmodus's Windows driver is a little smarter than LVM, and there is a little bit of a performance difference between uh, Bcache and LVM. Depending on what you're doing, Bcache might actually be faster, but those are things that you should experiment with if you get your hands on one of these drives and post on the level one forums. Now, if you want to check out their pre-order, uh, you can put a dollar down and get 27% off, and so this ends up being like 200 and some dollars less than $300. And if you look at what it costs to buy a 128 gig SLC 
SSD, it's about the same or more. Like Mauser Electronics has 128 gig SLC drives for like a thousand dollars. So if you just want to get one of these and use the 128 gig SLC as like a ZFS intent log on a separate log device, uh, you can, and you still have over a gigabyte of free space that you can use on your SSD. There's also the 900 gigabyte version of this SSD, which only has 24 gigabytes of SLC, and I've posted the LBA regions for that one as well. So if you use those LBA numbers when you create a partition on these SSDs, then uh, you will have an SLC region and a TLC region. So you wanna use Bcache instead of LVM cache. All right, that's fine. I'm Wendell, this is level one, I'm signing out, and I'll see you in the next one. Or come to the forums.